Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Wednesday, and uh, welcome to you, my YouTube channel. If you're new to my YouTube channel, um, glad to have you here. Uh, be sure to uh, click the subscribe button. It's free, and you'll get notified of uh, any new videos uh, as they come out, and that's always handy to have in case storm situations arise. And for those of you who are back on a daily basis, a big hello to you as we watch these weather models just keep going through turmoil <clears throat> on every run and here's I'm, I'm gonna get right into this um, first off with respect to Super Bowl Sunday and this is the new GFS and you know we have this high that's going to be going out underneath us and and we have discussed the fact that since there's no viable system in the southern stream it it really you can't really have anything so it becomes a matter of just a simple cold front and there might be a little light snow with that. Some of the models have a little <clears throat> precip here Sunday afternoon and evening, and then that goes out. Now, one of the changes that has occurred is that the models are suddenly trying to strengthen this low a little bit as it goes east of New England, and that's kind of important with regards to the next weather system. There's a, a shot of very cold air that comes into upstate New York and northern New England, uh, but uh, it doesn't penetrate all that far south it gets down into the northern mid-atlantic states where you see this dash blue line that would normally would be the rain snow line now i, I want to stop here at this point this is uh, early tuesday morning i want to go back to the overnight run of the gfs which from here took this low and turned it you know raced it eastward and brought actually a fairly decent front end thumping of snow uh, later Tuesday into Tuesday night for Pennsylvania, uh, north, the northern half of New Jersey, and much of the northeast before it goes over to rain or just tapers off as some rain or drizzle. And right behind it was another low that it decided to make into a major storm in the Great Lakes. Now, I've, I've said this already a number of times. We have seen the models do this before where it's been trying to, since December where it's tried to make a major storm in the Great Lakes, and they none of them have happened, not a single one. And when I saw this last night, I thought, you know what, this isn't going to happen. Uh, this became a very wrapped up low as it moved up into uh, eastern Canada, brought down some colder air back later next week. Now, I'm going to switch to today's run, and we're going to review from where we were. Okay, so watch what, what happens and this is a uh, I, I think a more reasonable solution you have the, this lead low that comes out tuesday afternoon and it's a little further south i was just i just want to watch that that it winds up being even weaker and further south on subsequent runs but no matter uh, it still suggests a front end thump thumping of snow here late uh, tuesday into tuesday evening uh, on the order of several inches or more, if this were correct, and, and maybe even more than that in upstate New York, the way it looks. And then it goes over to rain and drizzle. And you notice now there's no deep low behind it. There's just a, a, a low in uh, northern Michigan with a trailing cold front and another cold high that comes down. So along about Wednesday night, you get a cold front to move on through here. And then it turns cold for uh, the second half of next week. By the way, this is a far cry from what earlier models had suggested that we would get, you know, very warm air enveloping the entire eastern seaboard um, for next week that now no longer appears to be the case. Uh, the other models are kind of in line with this. What I want to see is the European, because the European did have a major storm, the Canadian did not, and I, again, I argue that there will not be one, that the features are going to be flatter, less deep, and that the overall profile of the atmosphere will be um, colder. Let's uh, review the upper air here. It's always interesting, this stuff, you know, no matter what. You, 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 it, it, and it's very humbling, you know, because you think you have it all figured out, and then something comes along and just basically rescrambles the equation for you. So here's our upper air, and, you know, here's for Sunday, and, and you can see there's, you know, there's a little bit of a, of a kink right in here. You get a little bit of a kink there. Uh, in the flow, but you know, this is so dominant in the northern stream here, the strong westerly flow, that there just really isn't room for anything to happen. So you, you just deal with whatever moisture you deal with. You have a ridge there out in the west. And then as we move along into Monday and Tuesday, now here's the system uh, for Tuesday that gets kicked out ahead. 
And you notice that the flow in the jet stream is really pretty westerly across uh, southern, uh, the northern tier in southern Canada. Now, we don't have, at this point anyway, we don't have any sign of a deep trough like this, okay? Because that's where you would wind up with some kind of uh, deep, intense surface low running up into the Great Lakes. But that is just not, is not the case. Now, the streams in the jet stay kind of separate. So I think this was just why I think it has a, a colder look to it. And then gradually, as that northern jet uh, dives southward, you wind up with a pretty cold flow of air for at least a couple of days toward the end of next week. And there's your ridge. And here's your trough. You know, I think one of the things that we have to come to grips with is that this is a nickel and dime year for the Northeast, it seems, uh, especially for the southern areas of the Northeast and the northern part of the Mid-Atlantic states. Um, you know, this is, and the northern part of the Mid-Atlantic states has been on the edge. They've kind of missed out on this. If you've been south of New York City, south of Allentown, um, you really haven't gotten much. And you know, snowfall rates around New York City, uh, northern New Jersey, southern areas of the Hudson Valley, southern Connecticut are actually running about average for this time of the winter. So, you know, if you're if you're south of that, you had that one event back in early January, and that's been it. Now, going forward, uh, we, uh, you know, see things just kind of moving along. I want to go back um, one run because uh, I, I don't have enough of the new run out. Let me just, we'll review with this and then we'll just go back and see if, if we have anything on the new run. Um, but here you have something that I noticed yesterday and I, it stands out like a sore thumb. And that is this big ridge that the model tries to build up toward Greenland. Now, it, it, it that pulls out and then another one builds in its place. You have, you know, what looks like a blocky look longer term. And, and the run before this was even more off the wall in terms of the blocking uh, that might develop down the road. But I, I, I want to caution you that, um, you know, the model does this a lot where it develops this blocking signature in the Atlantic and it doesn't happen. So uh, going forward here, we have out to about day nine. And when we swing through the upper air jet stream, you know, you can see right in here, you start to get some sort of blocking high that uh, is over Greenland and extends back uh, across the pole to Siberia, and that sort of pins these upper lows up in northern Canada. You, you don't have, you know, there's a colder flow here, clearly. It's not the most ideal because of how this is tilted, um, but I want to see how, you know, it, it gets resolved over time. You have a very strong jet gear coming into the Pacific with weather systems moving along it. You know, the, the ridge is, there's, there's a little bit of ridging here, but not a lot. Um, so we're going to just have to see in the long haul, you know, how this all winds up playing. It, it, it and that's one of my favorite phrases, I guess, is I do use it a lot. Um, sorry about that. You know, it's trying to learn how to do all this over a long period of time and ad libbing, ad -libbing a lot of this. Um, sometimes you just get a little repetitive, and for that, I apologize. Why don't we just look real quick and we'll finish it off with the um, above normal, below normal scheme, uh, because that is a good clue. You know, you want to see some cold air in Canada, and you do see it there uh, going into uh, the week of the February 5th. There's, there is cold air in Canada around. Now, here's where we are for Tuesday. So at least we're starting off with cold air on, on Tuesday when that first uh, round of uh, precipitation arrives. And then you have that next burst once those systems clear. You've got a pretty good extension of below normal temperatures from Siberia and Alaska down across northern Canada and in the northeast. This is a, you know, this connection here of cold air is something we really haven't seen very much of uh, so far this winter. So uh, it looks like we might have something coming along for Tuesday uh, as far as snow is concerned. I'll just review real quick what's going on elsewhere in the U.S. for my friends that are in other parts of the world uh, in the United States. And you can see it here. Um, in the West, we have uh, activity resuming. Let me roll it back. So here we are from today. We start to get weather systems coming into the West. Uh, looks like a good one for California uh, late in the weekend, early next week. And then another one on Tuesday. So it looks like a pretty good moisture stream coming into the West uh, for uh, the next uh, week or so. Uh, once we uh, start starting the, later this weekend and beyond, 
So at least California keeps getting these nice big indentations uh, in their um, drought situation. Uh, elsewhere, you know, it's pretty warm across the south. Uh, that doesn't seem to change any until, you know, later in the period when the this next high comes down later next week and gets pretty far south into the southeast and even some colder air into northern Florida, it seems. And there we have a system now. We're just out a little bit further now. We're almost out to day 10. And here comes another one coming down in the northern stream. So it's always an adventure, folks. What can I tell you? Uh, we'll um, take a look at the uh, European and Canadian models when they're ready and see what they do. In the meantime, uh, download my app and subscribe to my forecasts. Uh, the app is free. Uh, the link will come up here on the video. Uh, 99 cents a month for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, or in Eastern Pennsylvania. Just pick your zone and go ahead and subscribe if you'd like. And once again, if you've lasted this long, I assume you like my YouTube videos, so please subscribe. And by the way, I do appreciate those of you who share my videos out. That really helps me as well. The subscribe button's a little red button on this page. Just click it. It's free. Videos will always be free. I will never become a subscription service as far as my videos are concerned. And don't forget, latest posts on the website, meteorologistjoechoppy.com. And for New York City weather, nycweathernow.com with my friend, Angry Ben.